The term celiac is from the Greek word koliakos which means abdominal and was introduced in the 19th century in a translation of what is generally regarded as an ancient Greek description of the disease by Aratius of Cappadocia. Celiac disease is a digestive and autoimmune disorder that can damage your small intestine. People with celiac disease might experience symptoms like diarrhea, bloating, gas, anemia, and growth issues. Celiac disease can be triggered by a protein called gluten. Gluten is found in grains, like wheat, barley, and rye. Changing your diet to avoid gluten often helps relieve your symptoms. Gastronomic issues such as persistent diarrhea, abdominal distension, malabsorption, appetite loss, and in children, failure to grow normally, are among the classic signs. This often begins between 6 months and 2 years of age. Non-classic symptoms are more common, especially in people older than 2 years. With the use of precise genetic testing, the diagnosis is often made using a combination of blood antibody tests and intestinal samples. Making the diagnosis is not always straightforward. The blood autoantibodies are often negative in around 10% of cases, and many people only experience modest intestinal alterations with normal villi. It may take years of investigation into a person with significant symptoms before a diagnosis is made. As a result of screening, the diagnosis is increasingly being made in persons who have no symptoms. Given that more than one hereditary factor may contribute to the development of the disease and that more than one component is required for the disease to manifest in an individual, celiac disease appears to be multifactorial. The variable HLA, DQ2 allele or less frequently the HLA, DQ8 allele is present in nearly all 95% individuals with celiac disease. However, either of these genes have also been inherited by 20-30% to of individuals who do not have celiac disease. In other words, the predisposing HLA risk allele is necessary but not sufficient to induce celiac disease. This shows that additional variables are required for the development of celiac disease. The classic pathological changes of celiac disease in the small bowel are categorized by the Marsh classification. Marsh stage 0 means a normal mucosa. In Marsh stage 1, increased number of intraepithelial lymphocytes, usually exceeding 20 per 100 enterocytes. In Marsh stage 2, a proliferation of the crypts of Lieber Kuhn. In Marsh stage 3, the partial or complete villus atrophy and crypt hypertrophy is seen. And in Marsh stage 4, there is hypoplasia of the small intestine architecture. Marsh's classification, introduced in 1992, was subsequently modified in 1999 to six stages, where the previous stage 3 was split in three substages. The alterations are classically improved or reversed if gluten is removed from the diet. However, most guidelines do not urge a repeat biopsy until there is no improvement in the symptoms on diet. To confirm or disprove the diagnosis, it may occasionally be necessary to deliberately consume gluten before performing a biopsy. After a challenge, a normal biopsy and normal serology results suggest that the diagnosis might have been off. Villus atrophy, which is more common in children under 3 who have untreated celiac disease, is often accompanied by normal intestinal villi in older children and adults. This condition is called duodenal lymphocytosis. The only cure as of right now is a lifelong gluten-free diet. There is no treatment that can shield the gut from injury or stop the body from attacking it when gluten is present. In most cases, strict adherence to the diet promotes intestinal healing and results in the resolution of all symptoms. Depending on how soon the diet is started, it may also be possible to reduce or even completely eliminate the increased risk of osteoporosis, intestinal cancer, and, in some cases, sterility. The diet might be challenging, and not sticking to it could lead to a recurrence. Instead of referring to a full absence of gluten, the phrase, gluten-free, is typically used to describe a supposedly harmless level of gluten. Uncertainty and debate surround the precise limit at which gluten is safe. Consumption of less than 10 mg of gluten per day is not expected to result in histological abnormalities, according to a new systematic review. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and support us to learn more, thank you.